Look, peep game. Y'all have been asking me for the longest time to do more story times. Well, they're here. But with that being said, half of y'all like my story times with my face in it so y'all can see my expressions. And the other half of y'all like the story time with the game playing back. I'm here to give y'all both. If you watching the one with the face, the game play is in the description down below and vice versa. You're welcome. Enjoy the story. <laughs> Uh. <sighs> What's up, y'all? It's your boy Blast from Sage D. Back with another story time. Uh, 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 uh. I don't know if there's anything more frustrating than keeping it real. Keeping it real is basically a term that I feel like drug dealers came up with at the same time they came up with the whole stop snitching thing that they're doing, which is only so that people don't tell on them while they're doing illegal activities. I stabbed somebody to death. What, you gonna go snitch? I don't know about y'all, but to me, there is nothing more frustrating than when someone wants to keep it real. I hate when people keep it real with me i have a horrible taste in my mouth from the phrase i keeps it real i've been burned before now, if any of you guys remember my little sister from my other phd story time when keeping it real goes wrong my little sister was the queen of keeping it real but for some reason only when it screwed us the hell over oh my god it is sad how many stories i have about my little sister keeping it real and the ending to that situation would always end in one of us almost getting killed getting kicked out of some place where we was living or going to jail every time. After me and my family had got put out of the homeless shelter from my sister keeping it real, after living in a couple of weeklies and then staying at the Emerald Suites, which is at least top five most crack and roach infested living habitats in all of freaking Las Vegas. Shout out to Budget Suites. Only go there if you want to get stabbed or sold into human trafficking. <laughs> so my family finally got up enough money to move into, basically it was a fourplex. This place was actually pretty roomy. You know what I mean? It had two bedrooms, it was more than we was used to at the time. It had a real big master bedroom. It was a lot of space. With that being said, it's on Hollywood and Lake Mead. Now, it wasn't nothing I wasn't used to, but it still sucked having to walk home and nearly get robbed like once a week. Now mind you, this new place we're living in is low income is all living shit, right? I don't remember what the rent was. I'm pretty sure it was like 750 maybe, which is really cheap given how big it was. Now, uh, my neighbors were a little bit weird. The lady that was on top and to the left of us, she was always having a midlife crisis. She was like 50, dressed like she was 15, and talked in the baby, trying too hard to be I'm sexy voice. But it was cool though, cause she had a 19 year old daughter who was, who was cute. You know what I mean? I never got to, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, but we had no crushes on each other, you know what I mean? Unfortunately for my family, we couldn't say the same for the neighbor directly above us. Not only did this dude sell drugs, which wouldn't be that big of an issue, but the thing that kinda did bother us about the guy upstairs is his uh, very, very, questionable relationship with his girlfriend. And I wish I could get on here and tell you, oh yeah, all they was doing just smashing out. You know what I'm saying? Well, he was smashing something, but it was usually her skull, dude. He was beating the shit out of this female. 
up. We could hear it four to five nights a week. He was kicking the shit out of this female. And I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard a woman get the shit beat out of her, but it's a little bit off-putting to say the least. It's hard to sleep when you're hearing somebody get their, their freaking skull kicked in and is gargling for blood. The one time he threw the female down the stairs while she's screaming and shit. And when he threw her down the stairs, she only made it halfway. Now I ain't gonna say homie was all the way bad because he then went down the stairs to help her down the rest of the stairs by continuing to kick the bitch. And this is literally two feet away from our front door, man. I don't know if you guys know anything about domestic violence, but for some reason, if you go to jump in and you go to help, not only does the dude get mad, because weirdly enough, woman beaters, they don't like to be seen for being woman beaters. Whenever you call them on beating women, they always get mad like you the shitty individual. And then she keep going back. We've gotten used to this shit at this point. With that being said, one night in particular, we chilling at the crib, watching TV, playing some video games, killing roaches. My God, they're everywhere. pretty much. This dude, just like clockwork, starts kicking the shit out of his girlfriend. It wasn't that out of the ordinary until the gunshots started. Bah! Bah! And we guessed that it was through the roof, you know, because none of them came through our ceiling into our apartment. We all get scared shitless, you know what I'm saying? It's like 11 o'clock at night. We turn off all the lights. We're all ducking down and shit. We got a real dilemma on our hands, people. Do we keep it real and snitch on this dude to the police? Or do we just shut the hell up and let this female upstairs just succumb to the fate that she's clearly chosen for herself, given that whenever this dude would go out and sell drugs, she would never escape. I don't know, maybe the homeboy had this like, tied to a radiator or some weird shit like that. We don't know, YouTube, okay? We saw her go downstairs and get the mail sometimes. What you going back for, ho? You'd have to start thinking at some point that this female enjoys this type of shit. It's me, my younger brother KT, my younger sister Tiffany, my older sister Tammy, and my mom. And we're all downstairs, all the lights are off and shit. We're scared shitless. We used to crazy shit, but bruh, not this crazy. After the gunshots, all you hear is him still kicking the shit out of her with what sounded like the butt of the gun that he just shot through the freaking roof of the apartment complex. My mom's got the phone in her hand and she's debating on whether to call the police or just to let this whole be killed. Now y'all already know me, okay? I am a lover of females, okay? I am a captive saving the bitches. But with that being said, I've been in enough situations prior to this situation to already know these hoes don't wanna be saved. They don't wanna be saved. If you're driving down the street, you see a bitch getting stabbed up in the back alley, you just gotta let her do what she doing, baby. I've tried before, it's always been awful. My mom looks at me with the phone in her hand and she even dials in the nine and the one and the one. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Look, what if this is her destiny? What if this is what she wants? Let her be great. Don't stop her shine. We all have to take our place in the circle of life. So then my mom asked my sister what we should do. My sister always picks the worst option for everything. She's like, we need to go upstairs and kick down the door and let him know he shouldn't be beating on her. To which case, I very politely interrupt her and say, so we can get the same thing she's getting. Can you hear the passion in what he's doing to her? He's going 50 cent every single one of us. So then my mom, not listening to my extremely well put together argument as to why she should just let this hole die. She starts 
going to press the button to send real slow. To which case I intervene with my only last ditch effort to stop her from saving this raggedy bitch. Mom, look, don't save her. She don't want to be saved. Now somehow my mom didn't see the point that I was making. And she pressed send anyway. Alright, she calls the police, tells them what's going on, aka snitches with the best of them. She hangs up the phone, and then we're stuck back in the dark, peeping through the little hole in the blinds that we had opened up with our fingers to see what's going on. We didn't know what we were doing. I, <laughs> Fast forward about 10 minutes, and he's still kicking the shit out of this female. Now the weirdest thing about this beating is the fact that while he's kicking the crap out of her, she's just yelling that she loves him. I don't understand. Like, is this just really rough sex? I'm just like, bruh, I know that in the hood we talk to beat up the pussy, but I don't know about pistol whipping the pussy. Maybe she was in the s and I don't, I, I don't know what type of. So then another 10 minutes go by and the police show up. They didn't come all the way in. They just parked on the sidewalk. Sirens blaring and shit. You hear the dude literally right in the middle of giving it a wet work again. He stops and screams out, shit! You call the police on me, bitch? Who you call, who call the police? Bruh, me and my family, we're still all down in the living room. We ain't turned on no TV. All the lights is off. We're still like hunched close to the window watching the action as it unfolds. All you hear is what had to be him kicking open his own front door. Homie goes stomping down the freaking front steps of his apartment, which is literally right in front of the blinds that we've been peeping out for the last 45 minutes up to now. Homie literally has the gun in his hand. The police officer seeing the gun gets out of his car but stands behind his door because for some reason when we called and said this man was pistol whipping the shit out of his girlfriend to death they only sent one squad car with one police officer in it i bruh apparently they didn't like his ass that much all right we got a 415 in progress assault with a deadly weapon woman's being beaten to death with a pistol uh seen just one guy me and my family watching this police officer stand behind this police door yelling at the guy to put the gun down he didn't even draw his own gun he just yelling at him put the gun down put the gun down the crazy gangbanger drug dealer dude he doesn't even pay attention to the one police officer with his gun in hand starts walking around to the other apartments in the fourplex yelling and screaming aggressively trying to figure out who called the cops bruh i can't make this shit up hey which one of y'all ass niggas done called the police on me huh which one of y'all you a bitch. if you won't call the police you ain't gonna come out here you got a problem with what i'm doing why don't you come on come out here then huh don't be no little bitch. You better come out here. Homie starts walking around the front of the little fourplex, basically going from in front of apartment to in front of apartment with the gun, trying to figure out who done called the police by waving the gun around and basically saying, whoever done called the police is a punk ass and a coward. Be a man or a woman enough to come outside and say they got a problem with him to his face while he has a loaded gun. Now, I can only imagine that this scared the shit out of the policeman. Now, I say that because he's standing behind the police door and yelling for the dude to put the gun down. But homie ain't putting the gun down. Dude's female is outside screaming for them not to shoot. Female screaming, the dude with the gun is screaming in a manner that directly correlates with if anyone does come outside to fess up, to snitching on him, they're getting shot. I'm just taking an educated guess here, but given the circumstance, I can only imagine that to be the least of the repercussions. Our apartment is still super duper dark. 
We ain't turned on no lights. We're still at the blinds with them pulled down just enough for us to peek out and watch this. Given all of this, my little sister for some reason takes such great offense to this dude calling out whoever snitched on him, calling him a coward, telling him that they a punk ass for not coming outside, that my little sister, no bullshit, she gets up like, yo, I ain't scared him, yo, hey, I'm about to, she lets us know she's about to go outside and let him know that we are the ones that called the police. And I shit you not, this is her exact words, I ain't no punk ass, I keep it real. For some reason, I guess she still wanted our blessing in going outside and getting us all killed because she whispers and gestures us like, hey, I'm about to go outside and let him know I ain't a punk ass. I keep it real, I ain't gotta hide. But what starts as a whisper quickly begins to escalate vocally into a small yell. We can see with her body language and how she's getting riled up that she's starting to yell and stuff. No, I keep it real. I ain't no punk ass, I'm a coward. My mom being the closest one to her jumps on her and puts her hand around her mouth and like pulls her down to the ground and starts like, y'all ever seen somebody getting held back during a fight? Don't it always make them fight harder? This situation, unfortunately for us, wasn't any better. Cause now my sister's fighting, fighting hard. Bro, we're quietly screaming at her at the top of our lungs as quietly as we could possibly for her to shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. Shut up. Shut, shut up. Shut up. My little sister Tiffany's not having it. She somehow gets my mom's arm from around right her mouth. No, I keep it real. I ain't no punk ass. I ain't scared of nobody. I keep it real. Now my sister's starting to get so loud that the dude turns around and looks at our apartment. Homie starts walking towards our window with the gun out, not pointed at us, but still out. Luckily enough for us, it's at that exact moment in time that like seven other police cars show up, all brandishing lights and shit. When they show up, he actually gets down to the ground and puts his gun away and they put him in cuffs. I can't make this shit up. I can't make this shit up. The girl that was getting the crap beaten out of her upstairs, now that he's in cuffs, she's downstairs begging and pleading through all of her blood and bumps on her face and broken black eyes. For them, please don't to take him in jail. He's a nice guy. He's a great guy. He's nice, bruh. Unfortunately for us, she wasn't the only one that went outside to talk to the dude. My sister, amongst all the commotion, gets loose and runs outside and starts screaming about how we're the ones who called the cops. Now mind you, we didn't have any place to move. The guy, still being in cuffs, not being in the car yet, looks at us, he tells us, oh y'all the ones that snitched on me? Oh for real? That's what's up? When I get out, I'm killing all of y'all. All of y'all are dead. Yeah, yeah. Luckily enough for us, we find out later that he had killed somebody two days prior to us getting him arrested and him shooting out of his roof and him beating his girlfriend to within an inch of her life. It took us a week of shitting bricks and being scared out of our wits to find out that he wasn't getting out of jail. I personally had run out of friends' houses to spend the night over because I was scared to stay the night at my house because I wholeheartedly believed with every fiber and cell in my being that he was gonna come and kill us. The look in his eye didn't say that he wasn't gonna, which still didn't keep the girlfriend upstairs who looked a lot like Rihanna's beaten up photo after her and Chris Brown had gotten to that argument that went the wrong way in his Lamborghini from coming downstairs and yelling and screaming at us and threatening us for like three days straight. You know what I mean? Luckily enough for us, she got evicted. She couldn't afford the rent. She looked a lot like she was on drugs. I can't prove it, but you know, it just, 
It just looked that way. But yeah, yeah. Just like Dave Chappelle said, people, pick your spots. Okay? It's good to be real sometimes, and it's good to be fake sometimes. And it don't get much realer than that.